Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we are going to show you how to model finite elements in STAD Pro Connect Edition. Over the next series of videos, we're going to show you a variety of topics all pertaining to creating and loading finite elements in STAD Pro, including modeling individual elements, creating a finite element mesh, using parametric models, assigning properties and specifications to plates, and also assigning loading. In this first video in the series, we're going to show you how to create an individual plate element in STAD Pro. Now before we get into modeling our individual plate elements, let's first discuss a little bit of the differences between beams and columns versus plate elements. Beams and columns are modeled with line style entities, but modeling walls, roofs, slabs, and other surface components requires an area type entity capable of distributing load in more than one direction. This entity is known as a finite element or a plate. In a finite element analysis, our wall or a slab is modeled by an assemblage of small plates consisting of either triangular or quadrilateral plates. The difference between analyzing a beam and a plate relates to each type of element's ability to distribute loads. A load that is applied to a beam must be reacted at one end or the other. By contrast, depending upon the boundary conditions, plate has, plates have the ability to distribute load in multiple directions and the ability to resist both in-plane forces and out-of-plane forces. Now, as we begin modeling our plate elements and we start thinking about generating a finite element mesh, we should also review a few guidelines for element shape. The shape of the individual elements is important to obtain good results from a finite element analysis. If you're creating quadrilateral elements, the optimum shape for this type of elements is a square. The more a quadrilateral plate deviates from a square towards a rectangular shape, the greater the potential for error in the results. In addition to that, in the case of triangular elements, the ideal shape is an equilateral triangle. Now, quadrilateral elements are generally preferable to triangular elements because quadrilaterals have more degrees of freedom and therefore they inherently have greater accuracy. In STAD Pro, individual finite elements or plates can be modeled using a variety of methods. In this video, you're going to learn how to create individual plates using the add plate command and the infill plates command. We will also show you how to review this information through the plates table in case you want to use that area to also create your individual plate elements. Now in STAD Pro, whether a quadrilateral plate is created using the modeling tools or the tables, it is essential to draw the nodes of the plate element in either a clockwise or counterclockwise sequence. Although STAD Pro will allow a plate to be drawn in a sequence that is not clockwise or counterclockwise, a plate defined in this manner will be warped and will cause errors when the analysis is performed. Let's now turn our attention to our new sample model that we can see on our screen in STAD Pro Connect Edition. The first tool we're going to show you how to use is the Add Plate tool, which can be used to model either quadrilateral or triangular elements graphically. So as we go into STAD Pro Connect Edition, we're going to select the Geometry tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, and we're going to find our Add Plate tool, which is available within the Plate Tools area. You're going to notice that this has a pull-down, so here we're going to find our Add Quadrilateral Plate tool, and beneath it we also have an Add Triangular Plate tool. Let's go ahead and click on the Add quadrilateral plate tool and what you're going to notice is that your cursor is going to change its graphic. This means that I'm now in the modeling condition for this tool. I'm also going to notice that down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen in the status bar the program is going to tell me what it expects next while using this tool and it's asking me to select my first node. So I'm going to come down here and select one of the existing nodes in my model and I'm going to notice that my cursor starts rubber banding. Now again, I want to select my nodes either in clockwise or counterclockwise order. And for this model, I'm going to go ahead and go clockwise and select my second node, followed by my third node, and then my fourth node. 
Now I told the program that I'm adding a quadrilateral element, so it went ahead and was expecting me to select four nodes on my screen. Had I selected the triangular tool, I would have been expected to select three nodes. Now I'm going to repeat this process until I'm done modeling the walls in my entry area in my sample model. Again, each wall is going to require four clicks. Once I'm done using this tool, I'm going to want to come back to the ribbon toolbar and select it again to reactivate it. Now you're going to notice that my cursor returns to the beam cursor and I am no longer in that modeling mode. Now as you're modeling your plates, you may wish to see the plates table over in the data area at the right hand side of your screen. You're going to notice that when I'm in the geometry area in the workflow page control, that by default my nodes table and my beams table are available in the data area. To switch to the plates table, I'm going to come up again within my plates layout area and select the plate layout icon. This is going to turn on the plates table for me and I can see the three plates I just created. Now they are defined by their four nodes since I'm working with quadrilateral plates. So node A would be the first node you selected, node B is the second node, and then node C and D and so on. Now that we've gone ahead and we're learned how to model one single plate at a time, we're also going to show you how to use the fill floor grid with plates command. This command is used to automatically generate plates from a selection of beam boundary panels. This tool is typically used for floor slabs and this method significantly reduces the modeling time for generation of floor slabs in multi-storied structures. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this floor system here and you're going to notice that I have a complete system of beams and my intention is to have a plate within each one of these areas. Since I have a complete system of beam and the geometry is very repetitive from one bay to the next, I can use the fill floor grid with plates command. The first thing I need to do to activate this command is to select the boundary members for this floor slab. So I'm going to go to my select tab in my ribbon toolbar and activate my beams cursor. I'm going to hold down my control key and then I'm going to select all the boundary elements. And of course the interior members as well. Once you've made your selection, you are now ready to use the tool. So now I'm going to go to the geometry tab in my ribbon toolbar and I'm going to return to the add plate pull down menu and this time I'm going to select infill plates. And what you're going to notice is that 18 plates were created and I have 18 bays right here. We'll go ahead and click OK and we can see that additional plates were added to my plates dialog box over in the data area. Now if I wanted to see these plates a little bit more clearly, I can go to my select tab in my ribbon toolbar and activate my plates cursor and then we can see that plates have been created in each one of those bays. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.